up, hello! My name is Emma and today I'm going to be sharing with you guys my October book haul. This is a super exciting book haul. I have some foreign book covers, I have some new releases, and I also have a little unboxing. An unboxing! And readathon announcement. Let us waste no time and just jump on in. Firstly, I have a couple of UK book covers that came in the mail. I'm obsessed, it's whatever. The first being Ace of Shades by Amanda Foodie. I am so excited that I finally got this book specifically because I thought it was lost in the mail. It probably was lost in the mail for like two months. Ace of Shades is a fantastic fantasy novel about a girl named N whose mother goes missing and she has to travel by herself into New Reigns, which is known as the City of Sin. There, N meets her only lead, who is a boy named Levi. He is one of the notorious crime lords of New Reigns, and he is currently in a bit of deep doo-doo because he is involved in a Ponzi scheme that's going really badly and he can't pay back all the people he owes money to. So N offers him money to help her find her mother and they basically go off throughout New Reigns, they get into some deep shenanigans and it ends with a sort of execution game where the players bet their lives and you always lose. I love Ace of Shades, it's one of my favorites of the year. I have a spoiler free review if you want to find out more about it, but I am just so obsessed with Ace of Shades. I can't wait for King of Fools to come out next year and I'm really excited to have more of Amanda Foodie's UK covers because they're just all gorgeous. I actually think this is UK cover. I'm not sure if it's just a special edition, but it is Six of Crows by Lee Barduco. I ordered this off of Waterstones. But yes, this is the beautiful collector's edition with this canvas hardback and red foil detailing. It has red stained edges as well as this red map in the front and on the back has the classic No Mourners, No Funeral logo. I just realized like 3.5 seconds ago how beautifully the collector's edition matches my copy of Language of Thorns. I believe this one is a fair loot exclusive with the red foiling, but oh my god, they look so good together. I personally adore the Six of Crows duology. It is just this super high intensity epic fantasy about this group of misfits who go off on the ultimate heist. It's full of diverse, well-developed characters, magical world building is just all around fantastic. If you haven't read it yet, I highly recommend. The next UK edition I have is also from Waterstones and it is Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor, which is the second book in the Strange the Dreamer series. I'm gonna be real with you, this was definitely a very spontaneous book purchase. Listen, I have gotten better. I used to buy books so compulsively and now my purchases are much more calculated, but I couldn't resist with this one. The spontaneous part is that I actually bought this edition before I even read Strange the Dreamer a few months ago. But Lainey Taylor tweeted about the limited release of these editions and because I have the matching hardcover, I was like, I need to have them both if I'm gonna like the series. I don't wanna have mismatched covers. So like, I better like Strange the Dreamer and I did, so it's fine. So now I have the matching set and they're just so beautiful. I I haven't read Muse of Nightmares yet, but I'm really excited to. I've heard nothing but rave reviews and I just know it's going to be great. This month I actually did some book trades, which is really exciting. I don't do a ton of book trades. I'm like very specific about when I trade with people because it's just like a lot. It's a big process, but I had a really exciting trade with a girl named Alexandra this month. So thank you so much to Alexandra for sending me a copy of City of Bones in Bulgarian. You may have noticed I have quite a lot of different editions of City of Bones. I just really love collecting different editions and especially different languages when it comes from you guys. The Bulgarian edition from Alexandra makes I believe 10 different languages of City of Bones that I own which is just so exciting for me so thank you so much Alexandra for the opportunity to trade with you and send me this gorgeous edition of one of my favorite books from your country. The next person I traded with was Page of Love Alexa on Twitter so thank you so much to Alexa for trading with me. I am personally not a big books for trade or arcs for trade person on Twitter. There are some people where like it is their grind and that's awesome, but I just honestly find the prospect of trading with so many people really, really overwhelming. But I do frequently enjoy just scrolling through, seeing what people are offering, because even if it's not like super rare arcs that I'm looking for, there are a handful of books that like I do want in my collection, whether they are series that I started or series that I finished and I just never got the rest of the set. They're essentially the books that like I want in my collection, but I don't want to spend money on and Books for Trade is really great for that. So Alexa sent me a copy of Wires and Nerve by Marissa Meyer. This is the graphic novel spinoff to the Lunar Chronicle series. I believe it follows Eco, which is really exciting. 
I was sent a copy of the second volume of Wires and Nerve when it came out by the publisher, but like I never got around to buying the first one. So like this was a really convenient trade for me. So thanks so much to Alexa. So in the middle of this haul, I want to quickly discuss a new readathon that is happening very soon that I'd like to invite you guys to participate in with me. This video is kindly being sponsored by Penguin Teen as they have given me the amazing opportunity to help host the Fall into Fantasy readathon. This readathon is taking place from November 18th to November 25th. It's over Thanksgiving break for those of us who have off that week. So hopefully we'll get a ton of reading done. And it is essentially just a fantasy themed read along. Fantasy is one of my favorite genres. So I'm super excited to jump back onto the fantasy train and read some books that have just been piling on my TBR. This readathon does come with seven different reading challenges where you aim to read at least four different books this week. Some of the challenges include read a fantasy new release, read a sequel to a fantasy novel, read a fantasy novel with a character from the LGBTQ plus community as the protagonist, read a diverse fantasy novel, read a fantasy novel with multiple points of views, read a new fantasy series, and a booktube recommends challenge where you could basically take any book that any booktuber is recommended to you that's fantasy and read it. Penguin has sent me a big box full of fantasy reads to help me make up my TBR for this readathon. So I will be vlogging it and I'll do a little TBR in the beginning of it, but let's show you what they have sent me. The first book is Give the Dark My Love by Beth Revis. This is actually my host book. I will definitely be reading this book during the Fall into Fantasy readathon. So if you wanna do like a little buddy read with me, you can pick this up too potentially. Our main character's name is Nedra and she is a scholarship student at at this extremely wealthy and famous school of medicinal alchemy. She meets a boy named Gray there and Nedra and Gray basically team up in order to help find a cure for a deadly plague that is killing everyone on Nedra's home island. I'm super pumped for this book. It's got a beautiful cover. I am just always here for women who are interested in science and pursuing academia. So I think this will be a really great fit for me. The next two books that were sent to me by Penguin are Forest of a Thousand Lanterns and Kingdom of the Blazing Phoenix by Julie C. Dow. From what I know of this series, it is an East Asian fantasy retelling of the evil queen from Snow White. It's all about this peasant girl named Ji Feng who is destined to become the empress of the kingdom, but in order to achieve the throne, she has to sacrifice the man she loves as well as exploit this dark magic inside of her. My friend Monica from She Might Be Monica is a big fan of this series. She's actually helping us co-host the readathon, so I'm definitely very intrigued to see what this story holds. I have another new fantasy series Beasts Made of Night and Crown of Thunder by Tochi Onyabuchi. This seems to be a very complex high fantasy novel. It takes place in this world where people are trained to kill sin beasts which are essentially monsters created out of guilt. Our main character's name is Taj and he is a sin eater who like eats these sin beasts and essentially every time he does that, the tattoo of the beast appears on his skin. When Taj is given one of the most dangerous missions of his life, he is exposed to a dark conspiracy that there is someone plotting to kill everyone in his kingdom and he has to stop them. And then the final book that was sent to me by Penguin is The Brilliant Death by Amy Rose Capetta. This book follows a girl named Theodora who has the magical ability to transform between man and woman as well as between human and animal. The ruler of the land has poisoned the patriarchs of some of the major families and demands that in order to receive the antidote they have to hand over their sons. So Teodora transforms into a boy and travels to the capital in order to save her family. So those are some of the books that other hosts for the Fall into Fantasy Readathon are going to be reading and you can also pick up if you'd like to participate as well. I'm personally really excited for the Fall into Fantasy read along. I have so many fantasy books that I just need to knock off off of my TBR and I'm really excited to read so I hope you can join us. Back to your regularly scheduled programming, the next book I picked up in the month of October is Sadie by Courtney Summers. Sadie is a very interesting novel. It is basically told through two different time streams. The first follows a girl named Sadie as she has run away and is hellbent on bringing justice to the person who killed her sister. And then we also follow a small time radio personality called West a few months later who is chronicling the journey that Sadie has gone through and trying to find out what happened to 
to her. I actually read it Sadie this month. I listened to the audiobook and like oh my goodness if I have ever recommended an audiobook to you it is the audiobook for Sadie. Wes's parts are sort of told through a podcast format and that really comes through in the audiobook. The production quality on it is just so so amazing so I'd highly recommend the audiobook but I will obviously talk more about it in my wrap-up but it was totally a worthwhile purchase for me. The next book was sent to me by Book of the Month Club. Thank you so much to Book of the Month Club for sending me one of your October choices which is an absolutely remarkable thing by Hank Green. Uh, if I'm being honest I don't actually know what this book is about. <laughs> Apparently it follows this girl named April who wakes up one day to find out that all of these huge sculptures have just been dropped in major cities and she and her friend happen to be the first people to upload it to YouTube so they end up becoming famous for that. If I'm being honest I don't really get it like I don't understand what the plot of this book is but nonetheless I've heard some pretty good reviews. I think a few people I know haven't liked it but I think that I'll take really well to it. It seems very unique and fresh so I think that'll be a really good thing. The next book I bought in October is Dry by Neil Schusterman and Jared Schusterman. I went to a signing for the release of Dry with my best friend Natalia, so you should definitely check out that vlog. I will leave it below. That's like one of my favorite vlogs I've ever filmed because it was just such a fun day. The story of Dry chronicles what happens when all of the water has run out in California. It is called the Tap Out. The government has shut down all access to water because there is just not enough to go around, and it is all about how desperate people will go for one last drop. I also read Dry this month and I really liked it. It is a super interesting exploration into humanity and survivalism. It was just very unique and thought-provoking so I had a really great time reading it. So this month I received a very exciting package from Simon Poles that contained like five new fantasy novels written by women which was really exciting. If you want to see all of the books from that package you can check out my Instagram highlight called the book mail but in my hauls I personally only like to show books that I'm like very interested in reading that I think you guys would enjoy as well so I'm gonna show you two of my favorites that I'm super pumped about. The first is Girl with Sharp Sticks by Suzanne Young who is actually the author of the program which is a book I read years ago and really really loved. All I really know about this book is it takes place at the Innovations Academy where they train women to be beautiful and well behaved but the girls start to find out some of the darker secrets of the Academy and begin to fight back. It sounds really interesting. I love the cover. I think it is so interesting and I already know that I'm a fan of Suzanne Young's work so I'm super excited to read it. This comes out March 2019th so keep it on your radar. And the next book has been gaining a little hype in the online book community because it deals with one of our favorite supernatural TV shows and that is Slayer by Kristen White. This book is set in the same world as Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Buffy is one of my all-time favorite TV show so I'm really excited about this. Our main character's name is Nina and she is a watcher in training though she's never embraced the violent watcher lifestyle. But essentially somehow Nina not only becomes the chosen slayer but she is the last slayer in existence. Like I said I love Buffy. It is one of those shows I rewatch all the time and I'm very interested in reading a new story set in the same world. I am very apprehensive as well. I've also read from Kirsten White before and I didn't really love what I read so I'm not sure how I'll feel about it years later. Maybe my love for Buffy is just really going to make this a great reading experience but we'll have to see. Slayer comes out in January of 2019 so thanks again to Simon for sending me both of these awesome new releases. So I bought another UK cover this month. I actually bought two but only one has come in so far. But the one that did come in so far is Nevermore The Trials of Morgan Crow by Jessica Townsend. I am obsessed with this gorgeous UK edition with the gold foiling on the front. If you open it up it has this really vibrant yellow page with all of these umbrellas and it just so fits the feeling of Nevermore. Our main character's name is Morgan Crow and she has lived her entire life believing that she is cursed and everything negative that happens in her life as well as the people in her community's lives are all to do with her. She is destined to die on her 11th birthday but after a group of shadowy figures have been chasing her she is rescued by a man named Jupiter. She is whisked away to the secret magical city of Nevermore where she is to compete in four different tasks to gain entrance to the wondrous society 
society. It's so good. It gives you all the Harry Potter vibes from your childhood while also remaining a unique and individual story. I love everything about it. Wondersmith, the second book comes out next month and I am so so hyped. So I ordered the UK edition of Nevermore and Wondersmith will hopefully be coming in next month and I'm just so so excited to add these books to my collection. The next three books in this haul were all sent to me by Harper Teen so thanks so much to Harper for sending me three of my most anticipated releases for the rest of the year. The first is What If It's Us by Adam Silvera and Becky Albertalli which just recently came out this last October. What If It's Us is the story of a boy named Arthur who is from Georgia spending the summer in New York City interning for his mom's law firm. He is also Jewish and has ADHD. And then we have Ben who is a native New Yorker. He's Puerto Rican and he is currently going through his first real big breakup. Arthur and Ben meet at the post office one day when Ben is trying to mail back his ex's things and from there they part ways never to be seen again but they find their way back to each other and go on a series of failed first dates and the whole time they're wondering like is this something that we're supposed to be pursuing? Does the universe want us together? Are they trying to pull us apart? I really enjoyed What If It Does. It is like a great cute contemporary featuring diverse main characters. It's not personally my favorite book I've ever read from either Adam or Becky but nonetheless I really liked it. Um, if you're someone who's a fan of Adam and Becky you will 100% love it because they work so well together as writers but thanks so much to Harper for sending it to me. They also sent me a copy of Saw Kill Girls by Claire Legrand. Saw Kill Girls follows these three girls who live on an island called Saw Kill Rock where there is this deep urban legend of this monster who kills young girls and there have been young girls disappearing for centuries so these three teens team up together to try and stop it. I've heard rave rave reviews of Saw Kill Girls. It's another very diverse story and I haven't actually read anything from Claire Legrand but I've met her a few times and she's a really lovely person. I've heard nothing but good things about Saw Kill Girls so I'm very very excited to read it. And the last book they sent me which I personally requested because I'm super excited for it is That Night by Amy Giles. I read Amy Giles' debut earlier this year, which is called Now Is Everything, and I really enjoyed it. Like, shout out to my fellow Long Island authors. That night follows two teens named Jessica and Lucas who are from the same Queen neighborhood that experienced a terrible tragedy of a shooting one year ago. Unfortunately, Lucas lost his brother in the shooting, and since then, he has used boxing as a way to channel his grief and guilt. Jess also lost her brother on that night. Haha, <laughs> that's the title. And for the last year, she had struggled struggle to make ends meet while taking care of her depressed mother. So both Lucas and Jess meet at the same after school job and from there they really start to find love and build a friendship and maybe even more out of this tragedy that has affected their community in so many ways. I'm so excited for this book. Amy Giles' debut dealt with child abuse and it was a really powerful story so I'm confident in her abilities to take the same care in handling something like gun violence. It seems like it's going to be a really emotional and moving and I absolutely can't wait to read it. And the final book I bought in the month of October is The Miseducation of Cameron Post by Emily M. Danforth. This book has definitely picked up some hype recently as the movie adaptation of this book just recently came out which totally motivated my drive to pick it up myself. Our main character's name is Cameron and after her parents die she is forced to move across the country to live with her conservative aunt. Cameron is a lesbian who has to force down her sexuality in her new environment but after engaging in a relationship with a girl at school her aunt finds out and forces her into conversion therapy in order to correct her homosexual behaviors. I've heard really good things about this book. It seems like a super hard-hitting emotional story which are like my favorite contemporaries to read. The main reason I finally picked up this book is as a grad student I'm currently doing my semester poster presentation on the ethics of conversion therapy which is obviously terrible. So this book has just been in my mind recently as I've been doing research for that project. So I'm not sure if I'll necessarily have the time to read the book before my presentation. Maybe I'll watch the movie first and read the book later. But nonetheless, I'm really, really excited for this read. So that concludes my October book haul. I have so many exciting new books to add to my collection. I hope you guys are excited about them as well. Again, don't forget about the Fall Into Fantasy Readathon that is happening from November 18th to November 25th. You will definitely be seeing a reading vlog for me about that and I hope you guys can join. In the comments below let me know your favorite book that you bought, received, or read in the month of October. I would really love to know but that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you soon for a new video. Bye!